if you want to reach Grandmaster, you don't necessarily need to know everything about TFT. In fact, you simply need to know what are the good comps and in today's videos, I'm going to share you 10 reward comps that you can play and you should know by heart because these are the comps that will make you win many games and help you reach Grandmaster or Master or Diamond, whatever your objective is. So take a pen and a block note because today I'm going to share you 10 texts that you really need to know if you want to win. Let's get started. By the way, if you don't know me, usually I'm a challenger player, but I've been in Vegas event this year. So I'm taking a little bit of late schedule to reach challenger. But as you can see, I'm really close. Like I'm like 75 LP from reaching challenger. I'm really close and I hope that we reach today or another day. What I wanted to say is like in this meta, you can play very, very flexibly. Like I have Abe in flexibility and you can play reward comps and fast aid comps and whatever comps because there are a lot of playable options. The only issue is we need to know exactly when you should go for each variation or each comp or each strategy and today i just want to help you to master the reroll strategies so you guys have a lot of tools at your disposal wherever you start a game and you see a certain situation in front of you as usual i'm going to use tactor it's a website where i wrote this kind of cheat sheet basically i just put all the 10 comps with the best augments according to data because also we're going to use a lot of data today and in case you don't want to rewatch the video later when you're in game you can simply go to tactor it's completely free the link is in the description as usual and out of transparency tactor is also the sponsor of this channel that's why i'm using it all right let's get started so the first comp i want to show you guys is anis per weaver i think this comp is pretty well known overall but i kind of want to say you should not play it all the time if you are in master grandmaster lobby if you are below that you can force it a little bit more you'll be less punished but in higher elo you'll be quite punished so a couple of things i want to say about this comp first of all i will show you guys the data after but the Annie needs to be headliner emo and not spell weaver. There's a huge difference of win rate if you have the spell weaver and not emo, and you will understand why. About the items, you want to prioritize, of course, Shojin Nashor Tooth. These are the two best items for Annie. And then you have the Jerry Gauntlet thanks to Superfan. Once you have these two items, you want to stuff Nico. It's important that you have a strong front line. It's very, very important. Your front line needs to last quite a lot. And then after, usually, you start stuffing a third unit it's usually Ari because you get Ari much faster than Sona but if you get Sona it's actually nice to give to Sona instead of Ari she'll be incredibly good so the way I can check that in the data and we're going to do that here I use tactic.tools it's something I use every day so there's a bug obviously with superfan if you put three items actually sometimes it counts the items of superfan sometimes it doesn't so I'm not 100% sure I'm going to put two plus items and what I wanted to show is this like for instance if you play any reroll with full item you will see that the emo trait has minus delta compared to the spell weaver trait so it simply means that emo has a higher win rate we can see the top four win rate here and first place here which is higher than here and also another thing i like to see is the items same we're going to use only craftable items so there's hand of justice that's actually the best items for her but i would say be careful it has only 400 games compared to natural tools which has 41k games so we can see that natural tools is the best shojin is still very very good not necessarily the best but here it has a lot of games and some people like lose with any and then after we need to see also the trait so we have the best traits like six emo but i think this is a very rare setup when you play this because you have another type of augment but usually you might to push the spell weaver as much as you can if we look at here spell weaver we can see that seven spell weaver insane in rate and five spell weaver like the guide i showed you which is much more achievable because it has 33k has actually a negative data meaning that a positive win rate compared to what's written here and finally the augments i showed them here you can get, check it out here you sort by place and you look at the best augments here but basically pumping up is really nice attack spin on any that's what she wants cyber netic bulk perfect because it makes your team like bulkier so you earn more time so she can ramp up a bit more with the spell weaver stationary support same emotional connection was actually a really nice augment in the data and vampirism there's one bait we're going to see it here it's called so first of all we see that learning to speak 
spell isn't good at all it's actually a bait you don't want to play any if you have learning to spare it doesn't give that much value apparently and finally raise the tempo that's the augment for spell weavers that allows Annie to cast one more time on the second cast only we can see that it's not that great actually it's just average so it doesn't make you win actually it's kind of weird so I, I assume that this augment you don't want to pick it most of the time instead you really want to focus on combat augment that makes you earn more time so either cybernetic bug stationary support inspiring epitaph uh, things like this or things that also gives more attack speed to your whole team and that's actually much better and that's one thing I want to say about this comp. This is going to be the same for the other one cost reward comps. It's a comp you want to play only if you have, of course, I said it, any emo handliner. But also if starting, let's say, uh, stage 2-2, two, two, you have already 5 Annie's in total. So it will be easy to find any 3. Because if you spend too much time finding any 3, you will for sure make a bottom with it. All right, now let's go to the second comp. This one is Corky Reroll. So it's kind of similar to any. It's really, really powerful actually but you need to have a good amount of corky before you reach level 4 let's say or level 5 to make sure you can reward it without spending your whole economy into it so the way you want to play it is very simple you want to play with four big shots four sentinels and then after you can add a couple of jazz to amplify all of that but actually we will see a bit later with the stats the best augments and the best setup to play this is to play with twin terror apparently this is just the strongest setup possible when you play corky and if that's the case obviously to have only two big shots and that's pretty much it because you don't necessarily want to twin terror your front line because it doesn't give defensive stats except hp instead i think it's still better to have a solid front line with four sentinels so everyone has tons of defensive stats so about the items or corky you don't want mana you don't want things like shojin instead you prefer to have red buff gives incredible amount of attack speed and i know that corky already has the anti-heal in his spell but we don't really care about that we don't really care what we really want is to have this offensive stats from red buff and then after because you play four big shot he has a lot of ad especially if you stack a lot of eight bit so you just want to have crit so he can deal even more damage by amplifying all of that obviously then you have to have a good tank blitzkrank is going to be your best tank don't try to go for garen 3 it's a mistake it's a bait and then after you've done that you will need to build a secondary carry if you want to win your late game fight and there's nothing better than Jin. so if we look at the stats for corky the same way we did avec annie i find it very very important to do that all the time we can see that in diamond plus elo corky 3 with 3 ims has a good average not necessarily first place average but more like top four that's already okay and then after if we look at the items just to make sure you guys understand we can see that red buff is literally the best item with guard breaker but guard breaker i think it goes well only if you have ie ie isn't the best but if you look at ie plus last whisper i think it's actually one of the best let's see here <laughs> it's kind of fun they are showing that shojin is usually one of the best items but i think it's only because shojin is a lower version of red buff and people are still playing shojin quite a lot so we don't have the data of people using red buff plus something else also the thing is like if we look at the traits the best traits obviously if you can achieve six big shots apparently is the best way to cap your board with but what i'm afraid like if you do this you need to have a great front line but if we look at this it looks like three jazz is actually one of the best and is basically this comp but with the jazz emblem so i think this is why this comp with three jazz is insane and then after we have two rapid fire which is kind of weird but it's okay it's normal if you have jazz and then after two jazz is still very very high in win rate and then after we have six eight bit which is kind of hard to achieve especially if we don't have the correct corky but six sentinel or if we have the more standard version we have four big shots and four sentinels which is kind of okay if we could look at the highliner the big shot highliner is much better than the eight bit so this is kind of similar to any you have to play only if you have the right liner and that's pretty much it if we look at the augments they're kind of similar to any but except you can play with twin terror we, we didn't check the augments actually i remove the thing here so we have jerry lotus which is the best augment if you don't have ie of course jerry lotus is insane we have the crash test dummies it's really nice stationary support twin terror that's what i was saying twin terror seems to be an excellent moment to play this comp and then after we have combat augments like binary buried treasure cybernetic uplink this kind of stuff so basically you want 
wanna play with combat augment and you don't really want to play with reward augments like frequent flyers or things like this. And once again, very similar to Annie and Corky, you want to play Yasuo with the true damage headliner on Yasuo and you want to go into the six true damage vertical. So you want to make sure like you actually go with a lot of damage. So the main units of your comp are going to be, of course, Yasuo, Echo. Very late game units will be Kiana. And I would say if you don't have Kiana early, which might happen quite often, you just put the items on Akali. It's fine. And that's how you play. And obviously you want to activate three edgelord. So that's why you have Kale and Diego because Yasuo is already edgelord. And since Pentakill is free, you can add more Kaiser to have Sentinel and Pentakill. So that's way when you kill five units, your whole comp will have more attack speed. So if we look at the stats, once again, let's look at the stats. First of all, we want to see the items. It looks like items like Edge of Night, IE, Quicksilver, BT and Hodge. It looks like the crit build is kind of nice, but stuff like uh, Giant Slayer, there's blade also nice to consider and the augments you want to avoid most of the time obviously is Kinzu, Hex the Gunblade, Heartbreaker, Blue Buff, Titan, Titan is a bait, Iraq is not that great and stuff like this. So we can look also for Yasuo and it looks like the best endliner is True Damage Yasuo like we were saying there's a huge difference between these two uh, we can see like a couple percent difference of win rates and top 4 win rates so this is why I really like to play this comp only if you have the True Damage Yasuo and 5 Yasuo on your board or your bench so it's easy to find about the augments uh, we can have a look at them so the best augments are freaky friday because actually infinity force are insanely good on melee carries and here you will have three melee carries yes you of course kiana and akali so you can already stuff two properly thanks to freaky friday then after not today because obviously it gives you edge of night you have idealism because it gives you hand of justice and gives more damage to those who have hand of justice a cut above actually is really nice because obviously it gives this blade to Yasuo we saw that this blade is a great item but also it helps Yasuo to farm a lot of gold because Yasuo has an execute so he will actually take a lot of kills so he has a lot of chance to get gold from that then we have stationary support helping on the way bling it out gives a tech speed and HP to any unit who hold items I mean not any unit any true damage unit so really good stats on Yasuo and other things and then after a couple of other combat augments but once again I want to say that this comb works well if you have combat augments if you start to pick econ augments to have your three stars you will not scale properly and you will most likely lose the late game and then finally for the one cost this is something i try to avoid most of the time unless you have twin terror but let's say you want to play this comp without twin terror you can play it with six guardian and four rapid fire and jinx three if you have twin terror obviously you cannot achieve this you stay with four guardian and two rapid fire something like this so jinx punk again I want to say it's best to play with the rapid fire proc because that's what the stat says that if you have rapid fire you have much more chance to actually have a good game than if you had the punk but the thing is if you play with punk you can like, gamble your game and try to hope to get six punk which is win condition for this comp that's why i don't really like this comp it feels like either you play safe but you have low chance of winning or you play with punk it's more risky but at least if you have your punk emblem you can literally win the game because if we look at the delta we can see that having six punk is the real win condition of this comp but unfortunately you don't have it whenever you want and if you don't have this then we can say that four punk is actually the worst way to play this comp so if you have jinx punk chosen it's kind of hard not to play four punk if you cannot have six punk but if you play four punk you will most likely not have a good game so that's why it's kind of weird while if you have the rapid fire obviously if you can achieve six rapid fire apparently it has insane win rate but if you have two or four rapid fires you still have a negative delta which means that you have more chance to win the game now if we look at the item Jinx is one of the few carries that actually has a negative delta with Ginzu. Usually when you see Ginzu, it's always one of the worst items possible. But Jinx is only one of the few units who can hold it well. Then after, Last Whisper is her best item. And then things like Giant Slayer, Runan, Deathblade. You have a couple of good omens here. And if we look even at the Orn Emblems, you have Gold Collector, which is the best item. It's even better than Last Whisper. So if you have Gold Collector, it's maybe a sign that 
that you should play Jinx Reroll. And like I said earlier, the best of the best augment is Twin Terror. It gives you 3.78 average with 66% chance to finish fourth or better and one chance out of eight around to finish first. So this is literally the best augment for this comp and that's why I say here preferably with Twin Terror because obviously you have much more chance to win with. Alright, let's go to the two cast reroll. So there's one two cast reroll I really like is Senna. Senna is one of the comp that you can literally open fourth stage two and plan your comeback at level six with this comp and kind of win the game from that spot. So this is a comp you want to reroll at level six. At level six you want to make sure you have Senna true damage and liner. So if you see the Senna rapid fire you kind of have to skip and wait for the other Senna to come later in the shop. That's really important because the rapid fire doesn't help you to cap your board properly. And then obviously you want to play with three super fans so she can have the spear or shoujin. And next to that you want to add natural tooth and some AP so she can deal some damage. Try to avoid Ginzu. We will see in the stat Ginzu is one of the worst items. And then after obviously you want to have a solid front line. You will want to use Echo because you're going into the true damage line. And then after you want to stuff Akali and later you put whatever you find on Kiana. So if we look at Senna 3 or the items, we can see that her best items are not Edge of Night because it doesn't have a lot of games, so it doesn't really count. But Rabadon has an insane win rate. He needs a lot of AP. And then after you can go for Guardbreaker, Red Buff, Nashor's Tooth. Even Adaptive isn't that bad, but it doesn't have a lot of games, so be careful. And the ones you want to avoid, you don't want to give her another Spear of Shoujin. She already has one with super fans. You don't want to give a Jewel Gauntlet and you don't really want to give a Ginzu. It's actually not the worst item to her, but it's not that bad. I mean, it's kind of bad actually. And if we look at the win conditions for Senna 3, it looks like if you look at the obviously the traits, 9 true damage is obviously the best way to win the game with. Not something you can achieve all the time, obviously. But what I want to say, like 6 true damage is very high in the win rate, like minus 1.12. It's a lot compared to, let's say, Rapid Fire. It looks like Rapid Fire is okay, but definitely not as good as true damage. And this is why you want to achieve 6 true damage because if you stay at 4, you have a very, very bad win rate, like not even 40% chance to finish 4th. That's horrible. So that's really why you want 6 true damage. And that's why also you want to have a Senna true damage. So if we look at the augments, Blink Doubt is one of the first, kind of makes sense. Freaky Friday, not for Senna, but actually for Akali and Kiana, but that's also something you cannot necessarily control. What the Forge is actually apparently one of the best. I think it's okay because since you have your guaranteed Spear of Shoujin with Superfan, if here you can give things like Zonia and Manazane or things like this, she will deal a good amount of damage and then after you can have a lot of utility items, tank or damage on these two units. So I can see why what the Forge one of the best i mean if the best omen for this comp and then after you have things like march of progress so you don't need to spend xp to reroll cybernetic always good stuff like this so not really different from the others you will see that actually the best omens to win with reroll comps are not reroll omens it's kind of weird it's counter alternative but the thing is like why should i pick an omen that helps me have a three stars if i can already have that three stars and instead i can have something that makes my team stronger right so it's always the same problem with reroll augments but obviously sometimes you don't have a three star unit even if you roll forever Okay, now let's talk about the two cost and three cost reward at the same time. So these are the comps when you want to reward level six and level seven as well, because you have multiple units to reward. So the first one, I think this is a new one. I think a lot of people are hyped about it, but I think this one is overhyped. So it's Jax with Lux. I'm going to spend a good amount of time on this one because I feel like people are forcing this comp a bit too much and I feel like they are not playing properly and they are having bad games with it. So my job here is obviously to tell you the win condition of this comp. So the way I want to play Jax is very simple. So let's have Jax 3 with 3 items to make sure we take the games where Jax is the main carry. And we want to look at the units here. Okay, we remove Zach 3, Z3, Poppy 3 because obviously they are win conditions but you can't achieve them all the time. It looks like Zach 2 is extremely important. If you don't have Zach 2, you're missing almost a minus 2 in terms of Delta. You need Z2, very, very important as well. Poppy 2 is really nice as we can can see here and then we have set three minus one okay and we have select three minus one as well so what does it mean it means a lot of things 
First of all, we can see that all the EDM units are in a negative delta. All of them. Maybe not Lux2. Let's see Lux2. Okay, Lux2 not in a negative delta because it's just Lux2 basically. This is very important. It means that you need to play with 5 EDM. And if we look at the traits, 5 EDM literally after 2 bruiser, uh, literally the best trait you want to achieve. If we look at 6 mosher, which is the other trait of Jax, 6 mosher is negative as well, but not as good. So what does it tell me? It tells me that I want to play 5 EDM with Jax. I don't want to play 6 mosher. So I want to play 5 with EDM with Jax. I want to make sure that I have Jax 3 and Lux 3 because we saw it's a win condition, but I also want to have Zac 2 and Z2. And so now we will see that if we go at the Highliner, we can see that Jax EDM has a much better win rate than Mosher Jax. So again, it says again that you have to play this comp only if you force Jax EDM. If you don't have Jax EDM, don't play for this comp because you will have a bad game. Then after, if we look at the items, this is super important. I think it's one of the rare time where I actually look at the non-craftable items because we can see that the Zonia gives minus one delta on this Jax. And Jax was just a top four comp. But if you have Zonia, it becomes a first place comp. So this is another mandatory condition if you want to play Jax. It's the only comp where I put Zonia here because it is so important. If you don't have Zonia, you might not have a good game with Jax. You are just a top four. And if that's what you want, that's fine. If you want to win with Jax, you need to have much more than just Jax. So now let's remove the non-craftable items. It looks like all the best items for Jax is Jew Gauntlet because it gives tons of damage since he can stack the AP. So the fact that you can amplify that with crit is important. Crown Guard is actually nice as well. A lot of shield and AP, perfect for Jax. And then after, if you have Jew Gauntlet, actually Hand of Justice is probably the best second or third item. But things like Gunblade is actually nice as well and Blaster Stud is okay. And if we look at the augments, we can see that Submit to the Pit is just average. It doesn't make your comp much better. You have it's slightly better, but it doesn't make your comp much better. Instead, the omens you really want to go for if you have Jax, or rather, I'll say the opposite. If you have this omen, you want to go for Jax. It's rather this way. It's March of Progress, literally the best omen. And you will see that on the other comps as well because it helps you to reroll a level 6 and a level 7 without spending your money into XP. So you have a lot, a lot of gold. You can find Jax and Lux very easily with this omen and this is how you can clear your win conditions. So if I had to recap a little bit, Jax, it's a comp I will not play unless I have Zonia in 2-1 or I have March of Progress in 2-1 or Cruel Pact or, you know, Shopping Spree. These ones are kind of similar, to be honest. But without that, I don't think I will play Jax because honestly, it's not a good comp if you don't have these conditions. And that's why here, I'm putting all the ones here. You have March of Progress, Shopping Spree, Going Long, Cruel Pact, I forgot to put it. Even though Cruel Pact is a bit dangerous with Jax, I feel like Idealism, because you can give it to Jax and Lux and they will deal insane amount of damage. Jude Lotus, because when all the EDM will sample Jax's ability, they will crit, so they will deal a lot of damage. Coma Caster, for the same reason, because when they sample, they will cast one more time, so they have more shield. So this is the way you want to play Jax. Here I put four Bruiser for Mosher, but honestly, you can remove Gragas, you can remove Ilao if you don't find her, and you can like put more useful units. All right, let's go with Bard and Misfortune Jazz. You guys know this comp already. It's not not necessarily a new comp but it's still a playable comp and that's something that was surprising me because i thought it was at first a dead comp it's still pretty good but now it's more difficult to achieve a victory with it in the sense that you need to have misfortune and you need to have bard 3 if we look at the headliners jazz is obviously the best but we can see that actually bard isn't that bad if you have the dazzler as well the one you want to avoid usually is misfortune you actually don't want misfortune and land I think the best is to have Bard at level 6 or quite early actually so he can stack more because he will deal a good amount of damage and Misfortune will just be here to clean up the late game fights. So the way you want to play it, like I said, you really want to have Jazz. I forgot to put the Highliner here because I think it's still open like it's okay if you have Misfortune Highliner but I still prefer to have Bard Highliner with Jazz. I think that's just the best way here and that way he can stack a lot. He can have the Adaptive Helm from Superfan and then after you want to have 
have Rabadon, you want to have Nashor's Tooth. You don't want things like another Shojin. Apparently, it's really, really bad. If you look at here, Shojin Bard isn't that great. While you can have things like Blue Buff, apparently, it's much, much better. Uh, Nashor's Tooth as well, Guardbreaker, Rabadon, this kind of stuff. After you want to stuff Nico, you want to have a good front line. So Bard can have the time, you know, to stack the dudes. And then after, you want to stuff whatever leftover on Misfortune. Obviously, if you can, you want to have Last Whisper. You want to have Ginzu and you want to have another item that gives more damage so it can be Desblade but it can be IE it can be many things Desblade isn't that great actually so maybe IE maybe stuff like that if we look at the augments obviously that Jazz Baby is the best augment it's actually an augment I can recommend to pick if you want to force this comp at Q1 but if you have somehow already uh, your bard chosen before 3Q and we give you uh, that Jazz Baby obviously you want to pick it last time seems to be good apparently as well but other augments like inspiring epitaph cybernetic uplink more items crash test dummies stationary support uh, it's once again very similar to what we can see here we just want to have any ways to make your team last longer or uh, attack faster you know so these are omens which are always top tier in this meta and you can't really make a mistake if you pick them obviously march of progress is another good one so you want to reward for bard at level 6 and then after you push level 7 you reroll for misfortune at level 7 usually you already have a good amount of misfortune because you spend a good amount of time and gold at level 6 and then after you find misfortune 3 you start to push your level you try to add lucian and you try to fill up more synergies to have more value with jazz okay more the case a kill with crown guarded so this one is very specific i suggest you not to play this comp if you don't have crown guarded so this is an augment that gives one crown guard for free and that also amplifies your crown guard effects so why this comp is good actually one thing you might not know but if you have super fan Mordekaiser he will get another crown guard because that's his super fan item so with this setup with crown guarded you get two crown guards for free you just need to have one item for Mordekaiser and I like to have the gunblade because he will have a lot of damage a lot of tankiness so we just want him to make sure he can sustain and last much longer so he can stack AP more and more because once again in case you didn't know Mordekaiser highliner will stack AP AP permanently if he get kills with his ultimate ability so this is why you want him to last this is why you want him to have kind of early and this is why you want to give him tons of AP so he can get the kills then behind that you want to play seven pentakill and you can use kale as your secondary carry I really like to play kale because once again when you reward for Mordekaiser level seven you have a high chance to find kale three because not only she's not contested but also you still have good odds to find two cost units and you want to give her items like Nashor's Tooth, Rabadon, Giant Slayer. You don't want to give her Ginzu. Ginzu is one of the, her worst items, I think. Uh, we can check that actually. This is how you want to play this comp. Yeah, so if we look at the stats, we can see that Ginzu is her worst item. So Nashor's Tooth actually isn't that great as well, uh, apparently, but it looks like Rabadon, Guardbreaker, AP, basically just go AP. So maybe if you guys don't want to have Nashor, but we can have Red Buff instead. Red Buff is much better. I should have put Red Buff instead of Nashor's Tooth. So Red Buff, Rabadon, Giant Slayer is actually quite nice. And then if we look at this very specific pump, Obviously, apart from all these great combat augments I showed already here, you can go for very specific omens like long distance balls. I really like this one. In that case, you put Mordekaiser and Kale because Mordekaiser will have a shit ton of AP and he can share all of that to Kale, who also has a good amount of AP. If you put these two together in long distance balls, like you have, I don't know, Mordekaiser potentially with 400 AP if you have the good stuff. I believe the strongest reward comp this patch, Yone Crowd Diver. So Yone Crowd Diver, you guys know about it, but it's not easy to pull off because it requires you to have Yone Crowd Diver. It means that when you see Yone Headliner in your shop, you have one chance out of three, it's Crowd Diver. And you can't control it in the sense like if, for instance, you have the Yone Heart Steel and you skip it, it's not guaranteed you get the Yone Crowd Diver after. It's 50-50 between Edge Lord and Crowd Diver. So that's why this comp is a little bit hard to force, but it's okay even if you don't have the unique crowd diver it works rather okay with edge lord even though it's not necessarily the best but when you play this comp with the crowd diver at least you want to stuff yone he will be able to like 1v9 fights but obviously k 
Kiana will help quite a lot by turning the front line, giving items to all these units who don't have any items. So once again, if we look at the stats, there are a couple of things you need to understand. If you have unit three with three items, we can see that the six cry diver is your real win condition. You have 41% chance of winning the game with this comp. 41% chance it's insane but obviously like i said it's not easy to achieve if you can't achieve it you can still play with a uh, six true damage i guess you have true damage emblem on uni you can play six true damage in that case i think it's another great win condition or if you have the edge lord proc and not the crowd diver you should go for seven edge lord which is another win condition but you can see like there's a huge difference between six crowd diver and seven edge lord but anyway that i told you it's still playable like a 75 5% chance to finish fourth and 22% chance to finish first. It's a really good comp. It's just like the six crowd diver is insanely broken. So we can see that the worst is the hostile proc, kind of normal, it makes sense. And then after we have edge lord, which is correct, he just average. And then after you have the crowd diver, which is the, literally the best possible. So the islands for uni, we don't count even shroud because it doesn't have a lot of games, but we can see that death blade, infinity edge, runa are actually good. Gen slayer as well. Well, uh, Romok doesn't count. Titan is okay. Now it starts to get into average Hand of Justice, Sterak, Last Whisper, Edge of Night, the one you want to avoid, obviously Ginzu, Pure Shojin, QSS, Red Buff. So this is why I really like this build, i.e. Hush, Edge of Night. You have very solid items in this build and then after you just put whatever items you can on Echo. I like to have the Event Shroud on Echo. That way you deal a good amount of damage on the tanks before he starts to dash behind and then after you want to have Kiana obviously as your main late game carry next to Yone. So be careful guys, a lot of people are picking things like Eric, grab bag, team building and other stuff like this but as you can see it decreases the win rate of this comp we have average 3.6 but if you pick these augments the average drops and it's not exactly what you want instead the augments you want are heavy hitters jewel lotus long distance pulse vampirism stationary last and this kind of stuff you really want to have combat augments once again like this comp if you want to make it shine as much as possible you need to help yone 1v9 fights and that's why you want things like last stand uh, heavy hit vampirism not today you know this kind of stuff and finally the last comp is country reroll country reroll is extremely scary but i think you guys need to understand why so there are a couple of traps when you play this comp one of the first trap is to not pick a country headliner um, and you pick something like tamira executioner or orgot mosher these are not great and these are the things you want to avoid the best headliners are country so you can reach five country very very easily and then after you want to have i.e last whisper on samira you want double crit that items these are the most important items for samira and then after you can have giant slayer or another crit item on urgot you kind of want to put whatever's left so blue buff is actually nice now blue buff is actually a good item on urgot and it helps you to use your tears that you drop red buff is obviously great this blade is better on urgot than on samira and then after you want to have main tank and set is actually the best tank possible for this comp you can reward for vex three since you reroll everything at level 7 and why not put a thief's gloves if you have one or whatever left item you can find in the very very late game so if we look at samurai 3 in a five country setup we can see that like i said infinity edge last whisper giant slayer are literally the best three items possible on her if you look at the headliners we can see that country is the best possible proc if you have executioner ah doesn't work and then after if we look at the units with the delta so thresh oh, okay Th thresh three yeah kind of makes sense but thresh two very important or got three very important vex three very important set three very very important and if we look at the augments obviously three is a crowd is the best augment possible because it gives hp to your team for every three star for every three cost unit you have and you have one two three four five so that's a lot of hp then after you have scrap invention only 200 games so i'm not sure it's that great cruel pact march of progress living forge is actually correct i'm surprised probably because you want to have a collector for samira we didn't check the collector is definitely an excellent item for samira because it gives ad and crit chance so that's exactly what samira likes that's probably why the augment living forge is actually okay 
you have living forge so you place this comp you really need to have the collector into one otherwise it doesn't work and then after you have a couple of things like spoils of war because you actually hit quite hard in the mid game so you will win the most fights with a farm a lot a lot of resources lucky gloves is nice because you have executioners so you can give these gloves to vex for instance you can give another one to orgot you can give another one to thresh you know and that way you have a full team full capped out a full itemized and then after you have once again except spoils of war and march of progress krill pack shopping spree except these couple of things you have a lot of combat power items overwhelming force portable forge late of hand pumping up so this is once again a comp you want to play with combat moments and you don't want to play things like every grab bag which literally removes your chances of winning it's too bad it's just a bad moment overall and it's a bait most of the time all right guys it's been quite a long video but i really wanted to go deep into the details for each comp because it's really important that for each reward comp you guys understand the win condition of each one so you don't make mistakes so you can climb higher and like maybe reach grandmaster for christmas anyway guys i want to wish you a merry christmas and a happy new year because i believe the meta will stay kind of stable during this whole period and i don't know so you guys can either enjoy TFT, enjoy your family. I don't really know what happens behind your screens, but for sure, I want you guys to have a good time. And if I can help you having a good time by making you win more games, then I'm kind of happy, honestly. That's the best gift. See you in the next year.